Here's how you might test for equality of variances um, with analysis of variance and analysis of covariance. So I made a data set here, um, which essentially has three separate lines to it. Um, and then I kept e each of these th three lines in three different categories. Um, so analysis of covariance will add this x variable to the model, whereas analysis of variance will just see if there's a difference between a, b, and c, those three groups. Um, so let's suppose we have already run ProcGLM mod to get our design matrix. So if you want to um, print this out, matrix, um, then you can see what it looks like. Um, because I've run the x, the category, and the x by category, we should get um, a whole bunch of variables in this um, design matrix. So I've got, you can see that I've got the y, and then column 1 is just the um, intercept variable. It's just a 1 all the way down. Column 2 is the x vector all the way down. 3, 4, and 5 are the three indicators for all three of my um, uh, categories. 6, 7, and 8 are the x variable times 3, 4, and 5. Um, so you can see those are zero except for um, when the matching indicator variable is one. So um, obviously you can't use all of these variables. The model would be over-parameterized that way. Um, but let's pretend that we were going to do that um, and see what happens with an over-parameterized model. So let's suppose I'm going to use, um, this is our Bruce Pagan macro. You can see if you scroll down through here, I have actually um, commented out a lot of the prints. You can you can get those back into um, printing mode if you'd like, if you want to know any of those statistics. And I'm just going to use Bruce Pagan. I'm not going to use this um, other one. So here's what I'm going to throw in there. Column 1 is that intercept, remember, and then 3, 4, and 5 are those three indicator variables. Um, I would actually need only two of them um, for this model. But that's OK. Um, the macro will deal with that anyway. And I get the um, Bruce Pagan test right away. And because my p-value is so small, I can reject the null hypothesis that the um, variances um, are equal. And by the way, this is a, just a regular analysis of variance. Um, so there are other things that you could do besides Bruce Pagan, but this is just an example. Um, and then again down here, Shapiro Wilk says when we test the residuals, um, I get a small p-value as well. Um, so then I can do the same thing with the, um, analysis of covariance. This model is not over-parameterized, whereas this one is. Um, I've got the intercept along with the x variable, all three indicators, and all three indicators times the x. So we've got too, too many variables, all kinds of junk going down. Um, and if we run that, we can get our test statistic and stuff. And let me run this one as well. Um, let me point out one thing here. See how I've done columns 6, 7, and 8? Those are the three. Um, x variables times the indicator variables. Um, and the thing that would kind of match that, in a sense, conceptually, would be to use the three indicator variables, columns 3, 4, and 5, and then not put that intercept in there. Well, note that that would still be technically over-parameterized when we ran it through this macro, because this macro, what it's going to do is it's going to see um, if that first variable um, is not the one vector, then it's going to take this design matrix and concatenate that um, one vector to the first, to the beginning of the matrix. So um, if you want to use that intercept in there, um, that that would keep you from having an over-parameterized model and just use two of the indicator functions. So that's just a um, minor point there. But either way, this macro deals with it. It's OK. 
So once we get our results, we can come up here and see that um, when we run the test um, on either of these uh, any of these two ways with um, different numbers of variables, we're still going to get the same p-value 0.692 for the Shapiro-Wilk and the same p-value um, for the Bruch-Pagan, which is 0.94. In other words, the residuals really do look normally distributed, you can see, um, and so I can't reject the null hypothesis that the data is normally distributed, and for the Bruch-Pagan, um, that test statistic says, okay, I can't reject the null hypothesis that the variances um, of the residuals are equal along the covariance and once you take the um, categories into account.